a lot of companies that have interest in things not going the way the Bricklay of the same same thing all over again. Yeah. So of course I can't I'll talk about all the banks. Yeah. 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 You guys are dead. I do. 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 Uh, digitally remastered the age of blockchains, proudly sponsored by Blockchain Australia, Layer 1X, Orange Brick Road, One Brand, Blockchain Perth, and Swell Network. Uh, we're, in, we're in luck tonight. Um, we, I'd like to. Uh, to welcome up uh, Jody Hands, uh, the MLA member for Collie and Preston. Uh, Jody served as a Collie Shire councillor for two terms before being elected to Parliament in March 2021 to represent Collie Preston electorate and work, as, work alongside the West Australian Premier Mark McGowan and his WA Labor team. Today, Jody will be opening the event and speaking on behalf of Stephen Dawson, the WA Minister for Emergency Services, Innovation and Digital Economy, Science. Uh, yeah, that's it. Um, <laughs> if you'd like to put your hands together and welcome up Jody Hands. Thank you. Thank you. I'll just note that I do have a new boss, um, which is the Honourable Roger Cook, who is the new Premier of Western Australia, so slightly out of date, but that's okay, all good. <laughs> and uh, thank you so much. Um, and good evening to everybody here this evening. Um, I'd like to start by saying Nalan Karich Wad Wajak Nunga Mort Kayan Karak Nijabuja. I acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which we meet, the Wajak people of the Nunga Nation, and pay my respects to their elders past, present, and emerging. And I'm here representing the Minister, um, <coughs> Minister Dawson, in his capacity of innovation and the digital economy. So thank you and welcome to everyone this evening. I'd also like to acknowledge uh, Kevin from, he's the founder of Layer One X. Thank you so much. I've no met problem. you before. Thank you, Kevin. <laughs> I've lost track of where you were. No um, also to Matthew Rudolph, uh, COO of Layer One X. Uh, Johnny, who doesn't know Johnny in the room? <laughs> thank you, Johnny, and uh, welcome and uh, thank you for this evening. And Ainsley McKeon, uh, MC as well. Um, thank you very much. And I also want to say a very special welcome to the other Collieite in the room, uh, Mike Stewart. We worked out, um, I was a teacher at Collie High School for 18 years. He's a little bit before my time, but not far beyond. So, um, Mike, thank you, and it's great to make those connections here. Uh, it's my great pleasure to be here this evening as the opening speaker for this flagship event, uh, Blockchain Week 2023, and I love the energy in the room. Everyone was buzzing when I was here. It's incredible new technology, and uh, I hope that you all learn a lot from each other and exchange information at, um, during the week this week. Um, obviously, you'll be able to learn about blockchain's implications in terms of business, society, and governments. And I just would like to... I guess start by reflecting on the fact that I was uh, a young person who grew up in Yarloop um, in Western Australia and my nana lived till the ripe old age of 100. She was very excited to get her letter from the Queen um, to say happy birthday. And I think uh, one of the things that I really uh, reflect on in her life is being born in 1919 when the Treaty of Versailles was signed, uh, what the technolo technological changes were that she would have seen uh, throughout her lifetime. And um, she used to tell me stories about the first television, uh, man landing on the moon, the first computer. Um, all of it was a little bit strange to her and unusual, uh, which I can understand. Um, she loved her iPad because she could FaceTime family members, so she was quite IT savvy actually for somebody in her 90s. Um, but she used to say that she liked being on the line and obviously that meant, you know, using the internet, but she kind of made it sound as though she was putting out some washing or something. So, uh, you know, her development and understanding of technology grew over her lifetime, just like us. And I say that because in recent years, we, everyone in this room, has observed 
remarkable technological advancements in our society. And we're in a new era now, an age where digital uh, innovation is reshaping our entire existence. Blockchain technology has emerged as a disruptive force with the potential to revolutionise sectors of our economy. Blockchain's distributed ledger technology enables trust, transparency and security in an unparalleled way. It has the power to reshape industries. I was only just talking uh, down here before my husband's a power station controller at Muja Power Station. So to reflect on the way that uh, blockchain can impact on uh, industries is incredible. Uh, it has the impact um, of the power to reshape industries from finance to supply chain management, healthcare and energy, as we just mentioned. By eliminating intermediaries and fostering peer-to-peer -peer transactions, blockchain has the capacity to streamline processes and to reduce costs. In the context of government, and this is um, you know, of particular interest to me, blockchain technology can enhance transparency and efficiency of public services. It can be used for identity verification, voting systems, land registries, and can facilitate, facilitate the secure sharing of data across government agencies. The Australian government has been looking closely at blockchain and is committed to figuring out the most effective way to use this technology in government operations and service delivery. Here in WA, the Cook government's digital strategy for our government, 21 to 25, aims to harness the power of digital technology to support and stimulate economic growth. Blockchain may play an important role in this. Looking uh, beyond government though, blockchain technology has big implications for businesses as well. It can revolutionise supply chain management, reduce counterfeiting and improving efficiencies. Uh, blockchain based smart contracts have the potential to improve efficiency and accuracy in contract execution and management. But it doesn't stop there. One of the most exciting aspects of this technological revolution is the rise of NFTs. NFTs have revolutionised the concept of ownership. This opens up new avenues for creators, artists, collectors, and gives them the opportunity to monetise their work and reach global audiences like never before. Furthermore, the rapid evolution of the metaverse offers endless possibilities for immersive experiences, social interactions and economic activities. Blockchain technology will play a crucial role in establishing trust, security and interoperability in this new frontier. Now, I'm the mother of a teenage son, so uh, when I talk gaming, I'm sure there are a few people in the room that also can relate to my experiences of my son driving me nuts with gaming. Uh, but let's not forget the emergence of GameFi and DeFi, where the worlds of gaming and finance intersect. Now that to me means, Mum, can I please use your credit card to buy some skins, in, for example, in Minecraft? Um, I know that's not what we're talking about here, uh, but um, I have some very low-level low experience in this. Uh, GameFi leverages blockchain technology to enable players to truly own and trade in-game assets, while DeFi provides a decentralised alternative to traditional financial services. These innovations hold the promise of creating new economic opportunities which blur the lines between work and play and transform the very nature of gaming and finance. I hope that he doesn't learn too much more. <laughs> The implications of blockchain, NFTs, metaverse, crypto, DAOs, GameFi and DeFi reach far beyond technology and finance, penetrating every aspect of our lives. Governments must adapt to this new reality, making sure that regulations foster innovation while safeguarding the interests of all stakeholders. It's essential to strike a balance that allows for growth and experimentation while addressing concerns around security, privacy and consumer protection. Businesses need to embrace these disruptive technologies. Incorporating blockchain, NFTs and other technologies can give business a competitive edge, improving supply chain traceability and building trust with customers. And societies have a really important role in this too. They must engage in dialogue around this technology, grappling with the questions of what really is a digital revolution. We must ensure that the benefits of these technologies are accessible to all 
and that the potential risks such as data privacy and wealth inequality are carefully addressed. I invite each one of you to fully immerse yourself in the events of this week. Um, the discussions around blockchain 2023 will enable you to connect with like-minded individuals and to share your ideas and insights. Together, let's unlock the possibilities of this digital revolution, paving the way for a future where technology serves as a catalyst for positive change. Thank you, and let the age of blockchain begin. Thank you so much, uh, Jody, for opening up. Round of applause for Jody again. Thank you. Couldn't see the bit of uh, I do want to acknowledge one person who's uh, made a lot of effort to putting tonight together. That's Johnny Swanepoel from Lay One X. Thank you, Johnny. Uh, Johnny's uh, put together a stellar lineup of speakers tonight, and you'll be hearing from a wide, wide range of speakers on, on different topics uh, in regards uh, to blockchain. Um, I'll let the speakers know that you, you have no more than 15 minutes, so if you see me in the background like that, you've probably got about a minute left. Um, so just uh, just be, you, you won't miss me, put it that way. If you see, look, look at the back. But um, look, I'd, I'd like to start off with um, with our, our first speaker, uh, Kevin Cotino from, from Layer 1X. Uh, Kevin caught the technology bug very early. Uh, from, from the age of eight, he started developing. Uh, so he's been developing for more than two decades now has been working in blockchain space uh, for five years, and two years ago he founded uh, Layer 1X, uh, which is, you're in the office tonight, uh, a revolutionary Layer 1 blockchain set to change the blockchain industry as we know it. So without further ado, yeah. please, Kevin Cotino. Thank you. Can you uh, hear me at the back? Beautiful. <clears throat> I think this is the second time I'm doing this in the office. The last time we did it was a few months ago. Anyways, uh, thank you, Jody, for that. And I appreciate you coming to the office. And special thanks to the L1X team and you know who organized all this. All I'm doing is sitting in my office and coding. So when I came out, I was like, so many chairs. Oh. <laughs> uh, shit, I, I better go back and prepare my speech. Um, but a special uh, thanks to everyone coming here and <clears throat> as Matthew mentioned, I won't take more than 15 minutes. Um, <clears throat> so for the first timers who haven't heard about L1X, can I just see a hand for someone who has never heard about L1X? Okay, very few people, beautiful. <laughs> okay. Um, <clears throat> Pretty simply put, Layer 1X is a decentralized ecosystem that provides an infrastructure for utility-driven real-world applications to seamlessly build, secure and scale requirements natively and across multiple blockchain networks. So you can build on top of L1X or if you want to have a multi-chain <coughs> application, you can do that as well. But if it was one word that I had to pick, what would define L1X would be accessibility. So it provides access to Web3 as a user, as developers, or as projects. That's the team. So <clears throat> we've got Norman Lip. A special thanks to Norman Lip. I don't know where he is. He's been funding all my projects from the very beginning, so I have to thank him. Okay. Um, but we've got a wide variety of people working um, you know, in the team that bring expertise from various areas. We recently had the L1X Hackathon in India with more than 250 developers. So in terms of the active developers on the network, I think um, you know, we are pretty much picking up rapidly. <clears throat> the problems. I think uh, <clears throat> you know, there are many layer ones, right? 
and the problems that we saw was silos. Um, so many blockchain networks are pretty siloed. And just a fun fact, who thinks one cent as a transaction fee is pretty cheap? It's good. Please raise your hands. One, one cent. Beautiful. You're going you're gonna to regret this, but please. <laughs> OK. All right, beautiful. Just to give you an analogy, every transaction on the blockchain is like 100 bytes, one transaction. right? If you take one cent for 100 bytes and one GB, one gigabyte, right? everybody knows what one GB is, it's going to cost you $102,000. That's the cost of you know, using the blockchain. So it's not, it's not a new technology, but it's been there for a while, but it's still expensive. And the only way to reduce that cost is by creating an ecosystem of projects that every single user can interact with and reduce the cost in the long run. Businesses can't afford that kind of you know, cost. Enable it to send logic. What I mean by that is, um, you know, if you want to send, let's say, $100 um, to your kid, but you want to make sure that your kid spends it, you know, not on skins, but maybe something else, right? What is that? Uh, maybe something else. You can add, you know, a hundred dollar access or approval only based on certain permissions. So that's logic. You can't do that right now. Scalability. Um, <clears throat> when we talk about scalability, um, you know, we talk not only talking about scalability from the native perspective, like within the blockchain, I can scale to hundred thousand transactions. Beautiful. But what good can that do? So scalability from the perspective of interchain communications. I think that's where we are defining scalability as well. And security. Well, um, <clears throat> if you look at Ethereum, for example, you've got 67 nodes that you require out of around 8,000 um, to process a single <coughs> transaction. So we define security as the probability of being selected as a node again, right? Jargon proof, but we'll see. Anyways, it is built from ground up, so no copy-paste business. We haven't done any copy-paste. And I was very fortunate, actually. I was the only developer for six months who was building this from ground up. So we built our own virtual machine. A virtual machine is like a container where everything gets executed, like A plus B, C plus D, everything gets executed in a deterministic manner. You should know that every time I process the same thing, I should get the same output. Virtual machine for X talk. So we are defining interoperability as X talk. We're changing the word interoperability for X talk, and it does various things. We'll see later on. Consensus mechanism. <clears throat> so what we've done is, my wife gifted me a smart water bottle with a chip inside it that would measure how much I drink on a daily basis. That could be a validator on the network as well. So we are taking the concept of validators to everyday computing devices. Opens up opportunities for IoT as well. And database design. So I think we are the second blockchain after Algorand to select a database um, <clears throat> not based on conventional strategies like eBay. We have a cluster-based column family database. In effect, what it allows you to do is it allows you to scale as much as you want to, considering all the requirements that you'll be getting in. The solution, right? We had all these problems. The solution, interoperable. <clears throat> What we have done is, very simply put, we took a virtual machine and we slapped it on interoperability. What does a virtual machine, when slapped with interoperability, do? For example, if you have a tokenized asset, so one of the companies we are working with is tokenizing real estate. You could tokenize real estate and get your rent in crypto, right? But not necessarily that the blockchain you select for tokenizing your real estate, that's the same blockchain you want to receive your rent on. The other use case over here would be your skins, your NFT skins, right? <clears throat> you could NFT your blockchain or NFT your asset on one blockchain and sell it on the other chain. Opens up liquidity provisions for the games. Huge. Decentralized. Um, one of the biggest challenges right now is enterprises are building on Polygon, and then Polygon wraps their security onto Ethereum. So you're going from consensus to consensus. What we did was we created a system called subnets. Avalanche already does it, but you can host your own nodes. 
and take security from our public database. It is decentralized because you still have to adhere to the conditions that our protocol has, but it opens up enterprise solutions. Like you could have, we are testing it, but you could have more than 750,000 transactions a second if you design it in a certain way that we advise you to. NASDAQ is 700,000 transactions a second. Scalable, as I mentioned, um, our database is designed to scale, so it's designed like a leaf, right? And every single node out there that will be public or you can use it, people can join in. The nodes are a good business actually, you know, they make quite a bit of money. So <clears throat> it's pretty scalable, not only from the perspective of the transactions, but also in terms of the finality. So you can have a transaction that is final as well on the chain. Secure. Um, <clears throat> One of the applications that we build is a health-based smart contract standard. And we're working with a company called HealthLink Protocol, which has ties with the Singapore government. Your health record, with all the data leaks that you see, your health record will be put on the chain. And your doctor, your insurance companies cannot access it without your permission. It's not to say that you're going to sit over there and keep approving, but there are certain conditions as to where you can set the permissions for the doctors and the insurance companies. We are connected with multiple chains at this moment and <clears throat> we'll be stopping there for now. So there is a process where the chains have to apply to connect with us because these chains cover up more than 90% of the transaction anyways. Our focus area as an ecosystem are in three different areas. So we're focusing on decentralized finance, we're focusing on gaming, and we're focusing on healthcare. Um, <clears throat> August, so the 31st of August, we are launching the mainnet beta, and they will be having three applications on the mainnet beta. So we are having a DEX. We are already working with seven to eight DEXs out there to build a multi-chain DEX. The focus over here is not to go and build 100 applications. The focus is build three to four applications over the next six to 12 months and get active users on that application. The second one is health link protocol. So HealthLink protocol is going to put all the doctors, um, all the patients, insurance companies on one platform. So if you go to a doctor, you got to get paid by your insurance company. You don't have to claim. It will be automated. So that's with the Singapore government. Web3 gaming. Um, <clears throat> one of the biggest challenges of gaming is providing liquidity. So if you have an NFT on, let's say, the Binance Smart Chain and you want to sell it, you can do it on Ethereum. Or, in today's Web3 business, a lot of games have a hard time providing real you know, experience, Web2 experience, gaming experience. So we are the first ones in the world to take the WASM file format, which means your gaming or internet file format, and we can execute contracts on your system. In effect, you'll get better graphics, you know, you're unlocking a lot of things over there. But the most important thing from you know, the foundation's perspective or from the protocol perspective is connectivity. So there will be an L1X multi-chain wallet. You'll have it on Chrome extension. You'll have it as an app. You'll have it as an SDK. The only way anyone is going to use the L1X protocol is through the L1X wallet. So the projects will have to integrate with the L1X wallet only. The L1X coin won't be available on MetaMask or any other wallets. But the beauty of this is all your assets, all your health data, all your insurance products, your car records, everything on one single wallet. So you can have access to this in one place. And if you interact with any of these web technologies, you can use your wallet for that. One of the things that I like to mention over here is we are also launching uh, a web as a service product that Mike will go through. Today, when you build a website, it's pretty much on the centralized database. So we have built a solution where your website can be hosted directly on the blockchain. And if you want to use the website, you connect your wallet to the website, and all the data being generated by the website or any transactions has to be done through that wallet. So we'll be launching with multiple smart contracts for the developers. I like to call it the Lego, right? And <clears throat> I like to call it the Lego because developers can pick and choose and add what they wanted to. So the first one is fungible token. So you can go and create an L1X token. A non-fungible token, create an NFT, which I demonstrated the last time. 
<coughs> you can have a token swap. So <coughs> multi-chain token swap, you can swap coins between multiple blockchains. You can also have token stake. Now, the beauty of this is, imagine a scenario where when we were building the L1X wallet, instead of having swap, stake, all these things, open a savings account on the blockchain, right? It will swap your AUD for whatever coin, and it will automatically stake it for you, and the protoc protocol will automatically lend it as well, generating interest in your account. So from your perspective, all you need to do is open a savings account. That's it, right? But in, for the developer to do that, he has to go and add many things, like he'll have to add the token swap, token stake, lending and borrowing into one single smart contract. And this is across multiple blockchains. This is not only on one chain, right? x -talk, NFT liquidity, connectivity, these are long words, we're trying to shorten it down, but from the gaming perspective, the biggest challenge right now the games are facing is taking their NFT from Binance and selling it on OpenSea, which is Ethereum's marketplace where a lot of money is there, but still using the NFT here. So we can do that as well through the L1X protocol. Leasing, you can lease your NFT, but as a byproduct, if you are the creator of the NFT, you can keep earning recurring royalties as well, even if it sells across any of the chains, right? The music industry will love this. Um, <clears throat> and the L1X wallet and SDK. So <clears throat> the developers will be able to go in, use any of these template smart contracts that are there with the applications, or join together whatever smart contracts you require. We're gonna make it as seamless as possible for the developers to do this. We've got more than seven to eight projects already with us that we are working with, but we will be launching in August with the top three projects <clears throat> and focusing on these three projects in these industries to get as many active users on the network. Because the, the hardest thing is fighting the run of getting multiple projects and segregating the focus. So we are focusing on only three projects at least until the next six months. What I'll do is I'll get Mike Rao on the stage um, to talk about the use cases <clears throat> from the project's perspective. If you have any questions relating to the L1X tech, please find me after this. Thank you. Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, I'd like to talk a little bit about the actual real-world use cases, and, and Kevin touched on a few of them, but uh, I'll try and um, simplify it a little bit more for you. now. Um, there's a number of areas that we're obviously working in. Um, Kevin mentioned the DEX, the uh, Decentralized Exchange. Now, to put that back into context for those that don't really understand uh, 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 some of the crypto world, the, the DEX is effectively similar to an exchange, uh, like a stock exchange. It's probably the simplest concept I can give you. Uh, we're building that out at the moment, and it's um, getting very close to, uh, to completion. Uh, in fact, we've actually had a call with the team over in the US uh, after we finish this uh, tonight. Now, that exchange, um, the DEX over there is um, They've actually, it's been built as what we call a headless DEX. So, in other words, it's basically a white label solution that uh, all the other chains can actually relabel, put their branding on it, and utilize it for whatever they want, uh, for, for their own purpose on their own uh, network. But because we're connected to all those eight chains already, it means that those uh, DEXs now get access to liquidity across uh, over, um, about 90% of the TVL out there in crypto, the total value locked in crypto today. Um, the second area Kevin mentioned there was uh, the gaming side. Now, yes, um, a lot of people understand um, uh, the concept of NFTs. Some don't, but just think about it as a skin or a gun in a game. The other, the other area that we're looking at in the gaming world is uh, actually what we call gamification of advertising. To be able to take, say, in a quest game, that you're able to uh, um, go into a side quest uh, and um, earn rewards back from that. And an example of that is, let's say, a driving game. You're, you're a Ferrari fan. You love driving Ferraris, and because you go off on a little side quest or, or a, uh, a trip, you might actually earn some rewards and get back either an NFT, uh, Ferrari NFT, or a, uh, even in the future a hat or a shirt or something. I don't think it'll actually um, uh, reach the to full value of a Ferrari, but hey, we can always imagine. Um, and then obviously you look at the health side of it. Now, I've spent many years in the health industry, and I know some of the problems that they encounter here in WA. In, uh, in health, they're still faxing patient records between hospitals and between doctors. Being able to send your data securely, or having the doctor being able to send your data securely, but then also in the future looking how we can actually give the doctors, um, uh, um, or you can authorise the doctor access to your medical records 
and when you walk out of the surgery, that access is revoked. Now, because of things like uh, uh, homomorphic encryption, um, it, what it means is the doctor can then also update your data whilst it remains encrypted. He doesn't actually have to pull up your records because he doesn't have access, but he can still update it. Um, they're the sort of things that we're, uh, we're heading towards. Now, I've got up there on the tokenization of, uh, of assets. Kevin mentioned in there about um, uh, the uh, real estate. So we've got a um, large company over in, uh, uh, in Asia that are looking to tokenize things like shopping centers that are worth a uh, billion US to be able for, for small investors to be able to get in and invest in those products um, and start earning uh, rewards uh, from that. And then those, uh, um, the people that currently own the shopping centre can take those funds and build their next shopping centre. There's all sorts of use cases out there. I'm just touching on a couple of them for you tonight, and uh, I think I need to probably hand over to the next one. Matthew? Yeah, please. Yep. Okay. I think they tried a sneaky way of getting two 15 minutes right by having two speakers come in. <laughs> Let me just set up the next one. Okay, someone turned the light off, so this is gonna, I'm going to struggle even with these glasses. Um, <laughs> look, thank you, uh, thank you, Kevin, thank you, Mike. Um, look, the next speaker we have up uh, is uh, Brendan Bartlett from um, Orange Brick Road. Uh, Brendan is the CEO of Orange Brick Road, an organisation uh, focused on education and helping to guide people um, into the market. Uh, Brendan will be talking about investing versus trading in cryptocurrencies. So before. Without any further ado, I'd like to welcome Brenda Bartlett from Orange Brick Road. Hello, everyone. It's a Tuesday night. Does this work? Oh, it does too. Awesome. All right, yeah, hi, my name's Brandon from Orange Brick Road. Um, we did have a uh, big slide presentation. It was about 28 slides about why you should get into crypto, what the different markets are, um, being through liquidity providing, to earning passive income, to NFTs, to tokenizing real estate. So I had all that presentation done. Then I had a conversation with uh, a couple of my guys and they decided that um, I should keep it simple. <laughs> so this is what I like the best about this that uh, Rick did up was it's education stupid. And that's the little uh, take on um, uh, Bill Clinton. You know? Uh, you know, it's the economy, stupid. But except I'm not a communist. <laughs> <laughs> or, you know, a, uh, one of the stooges for the WEF. So, anyways, it is about education, and that's what we do at Orange Brick Road. Uh, it's right through, like, you know, uh, what's this Bitcoin thing? You know, how do I sign up to an exchange? How do I get a wallet? Cool, what's the journey from there? Everyone has their own journey. My journey into this was completely accidental. Um, I got into crypto because I'm a libertarian slash anarchist and I hate the state. Right? I hate centralised authority. No offence, politicians. Right? Yeah, not a big fan of them. So um, what happened was I, would, I got into Bitcoin, got into crypto, and then I would go to like a pub or a uh, barbecue or anywhere really, and I wouldn't shut up about it. You know? Have you heard about this Bitcoin thing? Have you heard about this crypto thing? And then someone would go, oh, can you show me? So I'd show them. Then they would tell people. Then they would tell people. So all of a sudden I was like, you know, teaching all these people how to get into crypto, you know. Uh, so from there, it's kind of grown into what it has grown into, uh, which is we have consultants that um, basically, uh, you know, specialise in different areas, which I'll get into in a minute. But I want to get the origin story out of the way, and I'll try to keep it short and sweet. I was just helping friends, didn't have a website, didn't have anything, it's just, uh, you know, I was doing it full time because I made a lot of money out of crypto. So I didn't really need to work. Um, so, like most people, when they don't need to work, I don't know if you've ever had this experience, but you get very bored very quickly, <laughs> right? So I'm like, okay, what am I going to do? So I flew over to the Gold Coast, I had some meetings with a couple of people, and we had some discussions about starting a crypto thing, and I just went, listen, really not interested, I kind of like my life, you know, I work a couple of hours a day on the laptop, teaching a few people, got enough investments, I'm all cool. About a week or two after I come back, and I said, thanks, but no thanks, da, da, da. 
I get a phone call from a lady, I won't use her name, but she was a client that I got into crypto four or five years ago, something like that. She's a single mum, a uh, very intelligent woman. Um, her, uh, the father of a child is a complete dickhead, so she's basically you know, by herself as a single mum. And uh, yeah, like I said, I got into crypto with her four or five years ago, three, I don't know, I can't remember. And uh, she rings me up and she's crying, right? Now I get to know my clients quite well, because like we screen share, we spend time together or whatever it may be. Um, and uh, yeah, in between we're talking, talking about their goals, what their futures are, what crypto can do, that sort of thing. So anyway, I get to know my clients quite personally. So she rings me up and she's crying, right? I'm like, hey, what's going on, right? And uh, she goes, oh, Brandon, 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 um, I I've checked my wallet. I'm like, okay, what's going on? What, have you lost your seed phrase? Has someone stolen that? What the hell's going on? And she goes, no, no, it's all good, it's all good. I I've, I've got it all there, I've got it all there. I'm like, all right, what's the problem? And she goes, I haven't checked it in some time because I've been busy, da -da -da, doing what I have to do. I can't remember how much she put in, I think three or four grand, something like that. Might have been a little bit more. It was from her tax check. So I've got to put her into certain cryptos. Da -da. So what's the problem? She goes, um, I'm looking at it now and it says $28,500. And I'm like, yeah, okay. And then she goes, is all that mine? Right? <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, it is. And she starts fucking crying again. Sorry, I just wasn't going to sweat. Right? And I'm like, women, right? Women, right? <laughs> How to divide the crowd. <laughs> no, she was very emotional. She was like, starts crying. And I'm like, okay, what's going on? You know, can you see it? Do you have access to it? Yeah, and she's like, yeah, no, it's all good. It's all good. Da, da, da. But is it all mine? I'm like, yes, it is. And then she starts crying again, so I calm her down, calm her down. Because right? I, I was actually hysterical as well, because she was completely hysterical. I'm like, where are you right now? You know what I mean? Like, are you pulled over the side of the road? I'm going to come and get you. The whole nine yards. So anyways, long story short, and I'm trying to keep it short, is um, she goes, um, that's completely changed my life. You know, I've never had $285 on my account at the end of the week, you know, like in my bank account. Now, being a single mum, that gives me a future and some hope for my, my child. I can put it on, I can actually pay for a car, I don't need to get it on finance, I've probably got a deposit on the house, da, 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 all for this money. And she's like, thank you, thank you, thank you, I can't thank you enough, you know, like, you know. And um, I'm like, don't thank me, man, thank yourself. You're the one that actually got off your ass instead of just listening to some things on YouTube and I'll get to that and I'll get to that and I'll get to that. And you're the one that called me, right? then all I did was just guide you where you'll spend, that you're the one that implemented it. You're the one that actually put the money in, all right? All I was was a vehicle, basically. So that's when I decided that I'm gonna start Orange Brick Road. So that's what we do, is uh, all these people specialize in different areas of crypto, whether it be through staking, liquidity providing, passive income, just basically security, um, uh, tokenizing real estate, um, fundamental analysis, you name it, we do it. So I've sort of collected a whole bunch of people that are a lot smarter than me, right? Because I spend 24 hours a day, seven days a week in crypto, but I can't cover everything that's happening in crypto, you know, like the NFT market. I've got no idea, you know what I mean? But I know someone who does, and it's one of our clients or one of our consultants. Do I know about you know, whatever. Yeah, no, I absolutely don't, but I know someone who does. Cool, so that's what we do at Orange Brick Road. It's pure education. Right from the start, I have no idea. I've never signed up to an exchange. I don't even know what a wallet is or a seed phrase or all the complicated stuff. Right down to people that are more advanced, want to liquidity provide, passive income, that kind of thing. And we've got a lot of relationships with different organisations like our GS Partners, um, and uh, Babylon Academy, other people I can't remember at the moment. Cool. So like I said, this is only three slides, all right? Because my idea is to keep your attention, right? How am I doing so far? Yeah. Uh, right, is everyone excited? Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm probably going to be the voted definitely the best presentation <laughs> tonight, right? It's pretty much a guarantee. Right, next slide. 
That's my uh, chief educator. It's Chase, he's my little dog. I only put it there because he's so cute. <laughs> That's it, basically. Look at these little fluffy ears. Look at that. Hey? He's awesome. He's, it, like, what I love about him, he's a cross between a pug and a Jack Russell. So he's like little and he's got a big neck. He's got a massive neck. So when he runs really fast and he stops in a hurry, his back legs lift off the ground. <laughs> Secures together. Yeah. So, anyways, he's a chief educator. Uh, that's a tax dodge. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I've registered him on a trust. Because <laughs> uh, we're all about not paying tax, aren't we, people? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's it, I should NFT that. Yeah. Yeah. You don't look very no, he's not. He's kind of a little bit like, what am I doing here? You know? He's trying to manage Brandon. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, great tax dogs and a bit of a comfort thing. This is the third slide. All right, cool. We have a website. What you do is you get your phones out, you scan that, you go straight to our website. I then have a Trojan horse into your phones uh, that I can monitor everything you say and what you watch. Okay, so absolutely use the QR code. She left already. Uh, <laughs> so. Yeah, basically at the end of the day, we've got online courses, we've got one-on-one -on -one tuition, uh, we've got a podcast, I do a radio show, uh, a crypto radio show, it's called the Crypto Hour of Power, right? So, and then we've got our own community where we talk through the Mighty Networks, uh, I do a live stream every Wednesday uh, and just talk about certain things on it because we have a newsletter. So what I've been looking at throughout the week, and then we just basically discuss and people can ask me questions. So there's a whole thing happening here, you know what I mean? But it's about education. It's about understanding crypto and what this is going to do in the future. All right, this is not a fad, all right? This is not magic internet money. You know, our magic internet money is better than their magic internet money. All right, that's it. A huge round of applause, please. Thank you. I think I said Brendan at the beginning, so I'm just going to pass it off as my Kiwi accent. Um, but Brendan, thank you so much. Um, the next speaker we have up is Anya Nova uh, from Power Ledger. So I'm going to try and read this again. Um, uh, Anya is the uh, heads the blockchain uh, development and stake and operations for Power Ledger, uh, and uh, we'll be speaking today about blockchain and the power grid. So please, round of applause for Anya Nova. Um, thanks for having me. It's a real pleasure to see lots of people in Perth getting together talking about crypto and blockchain. Um, so, as um, um, as it was mentioned, yeah, I've been in blockchain crypto since 2017, first as an investor, and then I've done several things, just trying out DeFi protocols and buying and selling things, and started working with PowerLedger, where I've done some business development. So, and capital raising, and for the last two years working on launching our public uh, blockchain. And um, you'll see all of our partners here, so there is no DeFi or crypto companies there. We really target energy generators and energy utilities as our main customers, so the business has two sides to it. One is the applications uh, for energy trading and trading of renewable energy certificates, and the other side of the business where I'm at is the underlying blockchain layer. So today I'll just give you an update of what we've been up to. Um, we are a Perth-based company. Um, most of our clients are overseas, but we've basically done quite a bit in the last two years. I'll start off by talking about the blockchain evolution. Probably quite a lot of you already understand that. Then I'll talk about the public launch of the Power Ledger chain, power staking. There's usually a lot of questions that come up on that. And then I'll talk about our product TraceX, which is uh, trading of tokenized renewable energy certificates. So um, raise your hand if you're quite familiar with how blockchain works. Yeah, and most people here. So I don't need to go through that slide explaining transactions and how blocks are validated by miners. But this is basically a traditional uh, Bitcoin blockchain. Uh, it still works really well, secures obviously large amounts of money. Um, 
it has evolved down the track to include smart contracts with Ethereum and really became a foundation for a decentralized uh, system of finances with the ability to program uh, what money do. And then more recently, the third generation of blockchains came about, which are blockchains in, uh, that are so performant that we can actually expect uh, things that we use every day, such as Uber, Spotify, or eBay, to start using those blockchains. So these are third generation blockchains. At PowerLedger, we have done a soft fork of Solana here. So Solana is, uh, as far as we know, the fastest layer one blockchain out there. Being fast, uh, and here it says 50,000 transactions per second, we actually tested it in the office without doing any optimization at all and quickly achieved 25,000 transactions per second, which is really incredible if you think of the 15 that Ethereum can do. Uh, I think that's a game changer because um, it's not just the amount of transactions that you can push through, it's also confirmation times. So anytime you use a website, you want to be able to click and things to happen instantly. So in Solana, confirmation time is less than half a second. So you wouldn't be able to distinguish whether you're using a centralized system or using an underlying blockchain layer. And uh, uh, we talked about transaction fees earlier, so you can see it's well, zero and then 0.00025 of a cent per transaction. And recently Solana have launched their compressed NFT standard, which means that you can mint over a million NFTs for under $100. So what actually makes Solana so fast? Um, if you don't understand this slide, that's okay. But the main thing, uh, the main takeaway is really paralyzed uh, uh, ability to process transactions in parallel. So instead of different validators processing different transactions, putting it into blocks, you actually have all the validators processing transactions at the same time. And that is able to be achieved because they have incorporated a clock in the blockchain itself. So there is a counter that counts. This transaction came first, this came second, this came third. So the validators don't have to agree on the time like they do in all the other blockchains. Any questions on that so far? All good? And uh, with PowerLedger, we've been on a really long journey. So 2015 really marked a, a big change for the energy industry. And that's when the cost of energy produced from solar panel came down so much that it became on par or cheaper with the energy produced from coal. So that, that is a huge change. And the founders saw that as an opportunity to start the company in 2016. 2017 uh, did Australia's first ICO and have uh, signed a first contract uh, for provision of our technology for peer-to-peer -peer energy trading. 2018 signed more uh, agreements in Bangkok and US. 2019 a first um, a customer in Austria and Malaysia. 2020 largest energy retailer in France, Equateur, became one of our customers, and then we have signed a large partnership in Thailand. So 2021, that was a, a project that some of you might have heard about that was peer for, um, peer to beer, which basically you can sell your renewable energy and receive cartons of beer. And that's all, of course, was tokenized on blockchain, was very popular. And then 2022, so that's, uh, when we have done a soft fork of Solana blockchain and launched it as a private blockchain, at the same time we have built uh, a bridge from Ethereum to Solana and have launched a native power staking. And this year it's looking to be another big year. So in August we're transitioning the PowerLedger blockchain, it's gone public. So right now PowerLedger blockchain is primarily used by PowerLedger applications and we plan to open it up to anyone who wants to build applications on top of that. We want to offer something that's especially for the energy industry. So it's not only really fast transactions like in Solana, but also we plan to onboard uh, data from uh, millions of smart meters so that anyone who, any developer, any team that wants to build trading of energy on top of that can both access the performant blockchain and the, the data that's already there. Um, and as part of that, we're also launching a decentralized bridge from Ethereum to Solana using Wormhole and also incorporating some private transactions which have been requested by our customers. So who here has uh, power tokens? 
one person, yay! <laughs> Maybe that's because everyone else has sold when it was uh, $2. <laughs> but anyway, so uh, Power Token is available on all the major exchanges, Binance, Coinbase, Huobi. Uh, Power Staking is live, so our team has launched that. Um, you can go and stake your power if you have it and you'll be able to help secure the network and earn the rewards doing that. So as you can see from the staking page, uh, you'll need to connect your Ethereum wallet with powers and ERC20 token. So that will create tokens for you on the Solana chain and you'll be able to start staking. And we're gonna switch gears a little bit. So I'll talk through one of the products that we have uh, that is live that has been really popular. And I understand that maybe not everyone will have a use for it because this is an enterprise product, so for purchasing and trading of renewable energy certificates. So a renewable energy certificate is one megawatt hour of clean energy that's being produced by a solar farm or a wind turbine. But I think it's really amazing and, and I'm so proud that a Perth-based company has been able to launch this and that's being used by companies in the States and Europe. So, as a, let's say, Facebook, right, who's trying to meet their sustainability targets, you probably have a large, expensive sustainability team that's buying racks from a wind turbine. You're doing it through a middleman. This is how this business works right now. That's a $20 billion business. And uh, there is no standard rack contract, so you negotiate for purchase of racks uh, on basically every time you have to purchase them. It takes three months. And I have spoken with at least uh, 20 large purchasers who buy millions of RECs at a time, and they have all confirmed that. That's incredible pain. They have to do everything manually. They have to sign those agreements, pay invoices, verify that the RECs have indeed been produced. And then the biggest shocker of all is um, I was speaking to a broker at a conference, and he told me, well, I don't want a digital marketplace for RECs because I just bought a million RECs for a dollar from this solar farm, and I'm actually, I have a buyer who's willing to pay two dollars for them. So that's quick one million dollar profit from basically a broker not doing very much. I thought that was shocking, but then the study came out that's showing for some uh, purchases of RECs and carbon credits, the markup is actually 700%. So they have analyzed purchases. And I'm frustrated on behalf of the buyer who's trying to meet sustainability targets, and I'm frustrated on behalf of the solar farm, because actually all this money should be going to the solar farm so they can reinvest it in, in the brokers. The middleman is collecting all these fees. So that's why we launched TraceX, which is automated rec marketplace. One person, this is an actual screenshot of the TraceX marketplace. Uh, the uh, solar farms, wind turbines, they onboard their recs onto the platform and sell them at market prices. Uh, who here uh, knows how an exchange works, like a crypto exchange? So that should be very familiar to all of you. This is basically what it looks like. It's really easy to place an order. As you can see, at no point you actually feel like you're using anything that's blockchain related, but, but all the recs are tokenized. I'm not sure I understand. <laughs> <laughs> That is the best comment, <laughs> but we'll have time for questions later. Uh, <laughs> but let's, let's say you're Facebook, buying Rex, right? The business case for you is simple. Instead of paying 700% markup, you pay 3% markup. Instead of taking three months for you to buy the Rex to meet your sustainability goals, you're actually spending max three days. Most of the transactions are instant, and if you're using crypto to pay for Rex on our platform, it is instant. And then on top of that, this is the dashboard that comes with the TraceX platform, so you can see your energy consumption in real time, that's the 24 hours there at the bottom, against your energy purchases, and it matches that. So it shows you that 4% of your energy that you have consumed came from non-renewable sources, so you know that that's your gap, and that's how many recs you need to buy in order to be able to claim that you're fully compliant with net zero. So thank you, and uh, if you have any questions now, I'll take them.